everybody, this is Michael Cohen, the Tech Rabbi. Today, I'm going to share a tutorial with you about how very powerful animations, really engaging, awesome looking animations can be created in Keynote. And the reason I say that is that when you think of animation software, most people don't think Keynote on a Mac or on an iPad as a animation tool. And what's really great about it is that you don't have to learn all of the really difficult techniques of animation because Keynote does a lot of it for you. So we're gonna run through this. This is a tutorial that hopefully you will get some really great things out of and we're gonna make it happen. So what I like to do with my tutorials, I wanna show you what it looks like and then how do we get there. So I have a couple different slides here. The first one has this, uh, dip, this scene of a uh, highway with a city and a background that is mountains, sky, and then a sun. And there's some really cool techniques with this that I'd like to see you replicate. And the reason that I think that this is a really great platform is because you could use this for all sorts of really cool animations that can connect to teaching someone a concept or just being a really great introduction for a video or some sort of message that you are trying to present. So if I play this, then I get the following. I have my cars, my buildings, and my mountains moving at different speeds. Now at the end, it gets a little funky, and I could go in there and I could fix that, or maybe it's just a traffic jam. But when you are driving on the road, you will notice that things that are closer are going to move faster than things that are farther away. And that's a really cool science concept that you have now just created a visual for. And the way in which each one of these components is created is each one is set to do a certain type of motion at a different time, different stage. And I just want to run through, actually, before I even get into the build order. The left side is your slide navigator. Each one of these slides is going to have different content on it. You add a slide by clicking on the plus sign. You can duplicate slides by right-clicking and clicking duplicate. And on the right side of the screen, you have a format, animate, and document feature. Now, the main two are going to be format and animate. As you can see right now, format is on my slide and animate is on my slide. Why? Because I have not selected anything in this slide. Now, the moment that I do, all of a sudden, there's going to be different options here for what I'm trying to engage in. Now, uh, something that is not easily understood, took me a while myself to figure it out. Once you start to group separate objects together, like the sun here, that's actually two suns, and I'll get into that later, you don't have much format. You just, you can change the arrangement, you can move the size of it, the, the rotation of it, but when you click on a single object, you're gonna get style and text and arrange, right? You're gonna get a lot more features here. Now, if you wanna change, let's say this truck right here, it's all grouped together. So if I double click on it, all of a sudden it's gonna let me select one of the specifics of a group of objects. And sure enough, I can turn that truck yellow if I'd like to. And you can get into some really sophisticated coloring and you know some really cool gradients and things like that, but that's for another time. So I have this object and I've decided that with the animation, I'm gonna have this group of objects move and I'm gonna have it move at a certain speed. And then I'm gonna have my buildings move at a certain speed. And I'm gonna have my mountains move. Now, the longer the duration, the slower it is going to move. And you can zoom out or you can zoom in, and then you can see your objects here. If I select all of these right now and move them, okay? Hold on, I forgot my city there, okay? So you can see here that each one of these is about the same length 
you know, if I wanted to, you know, I could duplicate this and I could get rid of these three right here. And then I could duplicate this and I, I could try to make it, you know, perfectly even, right? And then when I move it over here, what I want to make sure that I do is that each one of these movements, I want it to line up, right? I want it, I want it to be set where the beginning and the end are going to be at the same place, but they're going to move at different speeds because, as I said before, the mountain moves slower, the city moves slower, and the street cars move slower. So once I set move, I'm actually able to set where it moves. So if I click on this diamond here, it actually shows me where it moves. So if I want it to move out completely of the plane of view, okay, which I actually don't, I want to keep it right here. So now when I click on my city and I click move, I can then move my city and I can have the city end at that part, right at the, so that the last one is at the beginning. I can do the same with my mountains. And that yellow line is telling you that the point A to point B is going to be um, on the same horizon line. So it's not like your mountains are going to move up just a smidge as you move them around. Now, the movement of the sun is really interesting. I spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to rotate an object. And I realized it's easier to rotate objects if the rotation is the center of two objects. So if you would stand up right now and you would put your hands out and you would move around, your body is the center of both of your hands moving versus if you had just one hand out and you were trying to rotate uh, yourself without moving your feet, right? You plant your feet. So that's a physical example. You could try that now if you'd like. So I make the point of rotation right in the center and then I'm able to adjust that. And the way that I adjust that rotation is I actually move the angle rotation. I can just watch, you know, wherever it's going to end is going to be where it finishes. And it's going to rotate that in that series of seconds, right? So if I want it to be a faster or slower, I would adjust that as I go. And there's a lot of trial and error, but you're building your technique of timing. Now, how do I get the sky to go from dark with a sunset to light and then to dark again? Is I actually have a build-in, and this is just a preset animation. So you've taken an animation that is fading in and fading out, right? Build in and build out. I'm going to get to the specifics of that just in, in just a moment, right? Build in and build out. And you are using that to get an animation effect that looks like darkness to a color that you've decided it. So I decided that it's blue. Now, <clears throat> for each object, you have a build-in, which is it's not there, and then it gets into the slide. You have your build-out, which is now that it's here or it was always here, it's going to leave. And then your action is while it's there, what should it do? And those are limited. So you have your actions right here. You have your build in and build out, which is much, um, much more as far as options are concerned, right? And then in the end, you get this uh, process. So let's see here if my cars in the end end, right? So it doesn't quite end. And so what you could do is, is that you could either adjust the length that the cars move, or you could adjust the, the time. And at the at that point, you can decide how much how much you're going to put, you know, how much effort you're going to put into it, right? So here is a second challenge that I want you to go and engage with. And if you look here, it might look super confusing, like what's going on? There's a lot of different objects here, right? So now I'm going to get into the build order, because in this one here, the build order was pretty pretty simple and straightforward things are just moving at the same time and and we're going to go we're going to go forward with that here this is different okay so i have my build order which is going to show me all the animations that are going to happen and which object and as i click on those it will 
show you with this box around the object which object is moving in that order. And you can move those around, but you wanna be careful to set up your animation in the sequence order so that you don't accidentally put it in the wrong order and then it doesn't work and then you can't figure out and many times you just have to start over. So I start with this man that's already there and I'm gonna show you right now what it looks like. The man's there and then he disappears, turns in to the person running, then that person disappears, right? And it moves on to the next and it's happening really quick. This right here takes a second to engage because it actually crashed Keynote. And then it lands, he gets out and the flag comes and we've gone to you know the moon or to a distant planet. So here, what's happening is, is that the man's here and he disappears so that he turns right away into the child at play, which was the one that looks like it's running. So that one appears right away. Then, that child moves and I show that it moves right to the rocket. That child disappears and it goes back to the man standing. The man moves up like a little elevator into the rocket. The man disappears and then the fire comes in with a cool wipe so it looks like it grew from the rocket. And then the rocket and the fire move out at the same time. Now, how do I get all of these things to happen? Well, when I select my animation, whether it's a build in, action or build out, I set a delay, I select how it happens, like after transition means right after the next slide, it starts right away, it doesn't do a click. So that lets you create an animated video and not just something random that like you're doing a presentation, click, 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 right? So after the transition. Now the second build order is where we can get really cool and customized, which is you can start that animation on click or with the first build or after the first build. And if you do it with the first build, it's almost instantaneous. And so you can see here, I have with build, after build, because sometimes it doesn't give you the choice and it, it'll depend on what type of animation you do. Then right after build, right? And you, you, you sort of go through and you see how I've done the after build or the with build, like the fire and the rocket are gonna move at the same time so that there's no delay and you have the fire disconnecting to the rocket. And then as you move on to the next frame, so this next frame here, um, I actually crashed Keynote because I made a line, okay? And then I made a row of lines and then I made a couple stacked rows of these lines and then I duplicate it to the point now where I'm gonna double click on this right now. Okay, see there, that's a group, that's a group, that's a group, right? So all of these are all grouped together. It is supposed to mimic light speed, right? And it's just taking a long time to engage because if you look at the design, Right, the animation is, the, the, the rocket is pulsing after it's transitioned, pulses for, uh, you know, two seconds, right? Number of pulses, the scale, you know, I like that it gets bigger as it, as it shakes. And then that's after the transition. Now, this movement of these objects from point A to point B is with the build, but because it takes so much memory, it actually delays it. And that's just, you know, whatever computer you have running uh, the engine of, uh, of Keynote, okay? Now the second or the third slide is the rocket moves in with the fire and the man. So all three of these move in at the same time. The cloud comes and I use the cloud because it looks like smoke when you do this drift and scale. And I love, I love hacking these different animations to get it to perform something that it, that it, you wouldn't think that it would be used for. The fire disappears because the man is gonna move out and doesn't need to get set on fire. Man disappears, child appears, child moves, and then the flag appears. Now, it took a couple tweakings for me to, to figure out the flag needed to be right here where the hand is so that once the child gets there, and here, you know what, you could even make this delayed by like two seconds just so that it doesn't happen like 
right away. And then the child or the it's really the astronaut who's has no spacesuit and is, you know, engaging in outer space, right? That's kind of crazy. So we do the animation here and rocket lands, the smoke comes, he comes out, and then the flag is there, right? Now, as you saw there, the, the, the child was behind the flag. So I can actually go into format, arrange, and I can make the child go to the front. And I can make this child move, you know, delayed a little bit as well. And you can see as it happens that it's gonna have, you know, a totally different look to it, right? Just as that goes, and, and there you go. So I want you to replicate this and share it because this is gonna give you a really great introduction into how to animate in Keynote using the different functions of animation build-in, action, and build-out animations to really create some great storytelling visuals and also to be used to just share information in an engaging way. So thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to this channel, like the video, share it out, and let's show the power of technology to do great things.